Hello and welcome to Coffee Time. Coffee Time is a space where magical humans come together for some real talk, strong coffee, and powerful introspections on whatever is top of mind right now. My name is Natalie and I am your host for this channel and today's super exciting conversation. The idea behind Coffee Time is that you are in your favorite coffee shop, maybe cozied up with a book, and you begin to listen in on an intriguing conversation between folks at the next table over. For that reason, there is no big introduction. We absolutely let the conversation speak for itself. And if you do want to know more about these special guests following today's episode, I invite you to check out the show notes for more details. So on that note, let's dive right in. How about now? Better? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey, cousin. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> How's How's you? <laughs> Good. How so I, I uh I was a bit delayed. I had to I realized I'm like, why is everything foggy? I was like, I should probably clean my glasses like actually rather than just wiping them off with a towel. So I was doing that. <laughs> oh well, you know, a shirt, pants, whatever. It works. Uh-huh. It's not much you can do about that. Yeah. I just thought I'd be more comfortable. I have my uh, big ass parked on the floor with a couple of the big couch cushions. That sounds <laughs> awesome to me. I know I'm on my desk chair, but pretty much after this, I'm going to go back over to the couch. My cat's behind me somewhere over there. Um, um, Christoph. Yeah, Christoph, And just take it easy because I'm, I'm definitely less pain than last. Last weekend was a write off, but uh, yeah. my chair is like one of those wood chairs that forces really good posture. And uh, it's just too much right now. Yeah. Yeah. Can't do it. Can't do it. No. That's no. okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited to be, it's so weird. Like, okay. Cause you had mentioned to me very briefly, I think about like the family and the witchy stuff and like all of that. And it's really cool to be connecting because I had just posted in the group uh, being like black sheep of the family unite. Um, Cause I've always totally felt that way. And so to, have connected with you on Facebook without actually realizing we were related like at all (laughs) and have all these things in common and then find out that there's the the like biological family aspect was pretty cool (laughs) yeah exactly well when uh I was about 13 or 14 my grandmother is Debbie's mom Shirley okay okay Shirley Crockett yeah yeah I've, I've seen these names I've seen names pop up recently actually which is kind of funny but yeah. yeah okay um I guess my mom and her they weren't very uh we'll say copacetic for lack of better wording yeah. um and I guess whatever happened there was a letter I've never seen it do I know if it really exists eh. right I don't know but uh after that I never really saw the Crockett or the Kelly side again okay. so I didn't find all of you guys yeah until uh, my great-grandmother's funeral mm-hmm. and that's where I met your mom and I and was there yeah so we were probably both along in our little uh we'll say off the yellow brick road adventures yeah well back then Cause I, if I remember correctly, I was like 18, 19, like I was pretty young. Yeah. I think that, was that a, 10 years ago? The funeral? I think Roughly? so. I'd have yeah. to look at the picture. That big family picture has yeah. got the date on it. Well, there's in that picture, there's me in like a sequined black top and a zebra print skirt. So that's how I showed up at a funeral. <laughs> that's awesome. I was in this big, long flowered dress. Yeah. Looking all uncomfortable because I just wanted my cutoffs and my tank top. Yep. No, I can relate. Oh my God. Sorry. My meter is buzzing at me. My hair, my, um, my insulin pump. What's it saying? Okay. It's brand new for me and I'm trying to figure it out as I go. Um, that's no, that's really funny. I definitely have the picture somewhere here and like the little pamphlet from that day. Um, yeah. 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 And back then what was going on? Oh, goodness gracious. I feel like that was either right before I went away to university or it was like the first year I'd been away. I think it was probably right prior. So it was probably my last year of high school. Um, And on the topic of what we had like briefly gone back and forward on, like that was definitely a time of a lot of, uh, we'll say escape from a reality I didn't want to accept. 
I think that's a really good way to put it. Um, and like, I'm fine to be more candid on here. I'll leave to your discussion what you want to share about your journey, but like, well, in high school, great there was there. I was in the midst of my addiction. So, okay. so about the same. Yeah. 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 Mine that's hadn't really fully good. taken off yet, but probably because I was still underage. So like, I don't want to say it hadn't taken off. It was just, it looked different than it did two years after that. You know what I mean? Um, right. But what I realize now, so I, I think that I was an addict, alcoholic, whatever word you want to use, I don't really care, um, from like birth. Like, I don't think it was a thing that a certain event prompted, but I do definitely see where I think a lot of it was exacerbated by the spiritual things I was experiencing that I wasn't really ready to acknowledge or accept or investigate. Right. I thought I was going crazy, to be quite honest with you. I was self-medicating with cocaine, booze, and then I went to the doctor, and then I was on pills to wake me up, help me sleep, level me out. Like, mm -hmm. I've run the gamut of that show. Yeah. And then all it turns out is, well, spirit's going, you listening yet? Yeah, right? Well, and that was kind of the same, like, I as you've seen, because we've kind of connected more recently, I'm pretty open about this stuff now. I was like, yeah, no big deal. I talked to trees. I had a spirit chilling at my house last night to like watch TV. Like it's whatever. Um, and people kind of give you that, like <laughs> that, that look, you know, um, the head tilt. Yep. And it's like, well, what I realize <laughs> now is if there were a more acceptable reason for this, don't you think I would go with that? And like, Back then I was trying to get the diagnoses. I went to my psychiatrist, I think it was being like, I am seeing and hearing things. Am I schizophrenic? What is going on? We did all the tests and there was no clinical explanation. So I just had to let it go and try to ignore it. And, you know, like in so many ways, not just in terms of the spiritual stuff, like try to be normal and integrate into society when I had no idea how, because that's not, that's not me. Right. Yeah. Right. And holding down a regular nine to five job that gets tougher, the more into the journey you're getting. Right. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, like, okay. Right. Cause back then I was in school. So I was in university. I was working full time, but my hours were all over the place. Um, I was definitely not sleeping. I can tell you that much. Um, and uh, now I have, like, I work seven to four Monday to Friday, more or less. Um, and it's actually kind of funny because when all this stuff happened back in, I think it was June was when I first discovered that I had like a spirit attached to me and I was terrified, right? Because like I had never really acknowledged that stuff before fully. Yeah. It had happened, but I'd be like, oh, this thing happened. And then I would just push it aside. Um, but my boss actually was like, I said I had some stuff going on at home and was very like cryptic about it. And she was like, do you like not to pry, but do you mean like spirit things? And I was like, oh, because I work in insurance. I was not expecting that. <laughs> like, you know, right. um, but it was kind of cool. And so luckily, like she was accepting to the extent that I shared. Um, but I'm noticing the more I dive in, the more it's hard to keep to any schedule because it, it's just, it's hard to explain. Maybe you can articulate that better since you're a bit further along on your journey. Um, yeah, it is hard, but you just kind of learn how to deal because with me, like I can shut it off, mm -hmm. but I'm always on, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like I'll be cruising down the road. I'm getting better now, but, uh, people would be on the side of the road, crossing the street animals and I'm jamming on the brakes and stuff. And you just kind of learn. Mm -hmm. Um, it's hard to explain there's almost like a switch but mine just never fully disengages so it got to the point where I've asked the hubby yeah. I'm learning to differentiate though between spirit and regular like I call us tangible yeah smackety smack right we're yeah we're regular but um there's for me they almost have a haze around them not necessarily aura. So I'm kind of learning to see the haze and the aura right away, but it's, it's tough. Yeah. See, I have only had a couple instances so far. This is the thing my friend always says to me. She's like, you don't always have a choice, honey. And I was like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't often see things at this point in my life blatantly in front of me. Like I see it very much in my third eye Okay. as of now. Um, yeah, that's how it normally comes. And I'm starting to see them. We're talking, when I say them, I'll say entities, uh, whether spirit or ghost, I don't always know. I haven't quite figured that part out. Um, yeah but I normally see it there. And normally only when I'm like focusing on it, like trying to see what's going on or like when I'm about to go to bed is when things are more clear. Um, but luckily things have been pretty chill or um, I'll see like a, it's more like a shadow, but same thing like in my third eye. I don't always see like a well-articulated person. If that makes sense. Yeah, I don't either. I see it in the third eye, I guess, for lack of better wording, yeah. I see it without it. Yeah. Yeah. But the first few, you, you'll learn to differentiate eventually. It's hard to explain how, Yeah. but that's my little thing. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Like my daughter, she'll probably murder me. She's in the other room. Huh? Um, Steve, I kind of kicked him out and I'm like, go, go do your shopping, whatever you're doing. Um, she can literally off and on like a light switch like no problem, carry on the day. And um, I think somehow she's managed a little bit more control than I have. I just kind of roll with it because this is how I've been my whole life. Yeah. I don't know any different. Yeah. I That's don't fascinating. Know yeah, she rolls. I was just terrified. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, that's interesting to me. So what was like the... I guess that because you mentioned too, like with history with drugs, et cetera, and, and trying to figure out how to deal with all this, like what was that switch like for you when you transitioned to really like meeting this stuff head on? And I guess in my terms, like kind of having to just accept that it was there and it was real. Well, I've just kind of sat back and thought as I started getting sober, I cut out the booze. Mm -hmm. Then slowly, like I fell down a few times getting off the actual drugs. And then I just threw down the medications and I just started learning head on, remembered little things that I'd seen and read here and there. I watched a lot of Montel back in the day and Sylvia Brown. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> but I oh, had funny. to watch her shows because she kind of explained things. Mm -hmm. She put it in layman's terms and... Then I realized I'm like, okay, well, I'm not really crazy. And then there just so happened to be somebody that had been in my life off and on pretty much my entire life mm -hmm. back in my memories. Well, she started going down her trail mm -hmm. and we kind of got to talking one day and I thought, well, I'll come check out one of these classes, do a soul retrieval, you know, thinking I'm always down for the weird, the unknown, and adventure is an adventure. As long as there's yeah. no heights, I'm give, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> heights, go screw yourself. But yeah. anyway, um, I went out and I did this, and uh, it just made so much more sense. Mm. And realized you're not crazy. This is who you are. And then just mm. random things saying to people that I don't know. Well, hey, blah blah blah. And they're like, oh my god, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just do. Yep. So what's this, what's the soul retrieval? I'm curious about this because I haven't heard that term. That kind of, it, it, basically the pieces of you that you didn't realize you didn't give away, they were taken from you in mm. your entire life, like little things in your childhood where you lost your power. Mm. It just kind of helps you regain that power back. It gives you back that little girl that gives you back that adolescent, mm -hmm. just little pieces of yourself that you realize in a sense, you did give it willingly, but more chances than not, you didn't. You just kind of went along with the road mm -hmm. because it's easier. Mm -hmm. You know, you really wanted to scream no at somebody about something, whatever it may have been, mm -hmm. but you went along with it just because it made your life easier. Yeah. And that takes your power away. And then, yeah, you just mm -hmm. become a victim of circumstance, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that comes up when you say that too, is like survival, like going into that survival mode, which I've been exploring a lot since I'm kind of just starting my personal trauma work. Um, and the that I think is a big I like part. to call that. Yeah. That's the hard stuff. That's the dark stuff. 
Mm -hmm. That's a lot of shit you don't tell nobody. Yeah, I'm realizing. So a big message that I've been getting, and this isn't going to be the first time it comes up on here because things do that, but uh, is just that that like that shadow that's an essential part of us, right? Like it's not even a place. And I think this, this might've come up in something I sent you. It's not a place we need to shine necessarily shine light on. It's like, we need to know we have the light. And so we're safe to explore that darkness. Right. Um, All the pieces that broke us gives the light a chance to come through. Mm -hmm. And I just got like big chills. Um, but it's like the, the darkness being part of me, right? Like not separate. It's not something I have to fix. It, it just is. Um, and I think, whew, and I think that's really beautiful. Um, yeah, I like that. So what's the, cause now I'm just really curious, like what, do you mind sharing what the overall process was like for that journey? However, I know people talk about different types of soul retrieval. So like, what did yours look like more practically? Wow. It, it gave me peace. Mm. It gave me a chance to realize, you know, some of the things that happened when all that went along, that doesn't destroy me as a person. Mm -hmm. That just makes me who I am. Mm -hmm. It's, it doesn't make me bad. It doesn't make me good. It just makes me real. And, you know, way before you even come here, you decide what adventure you're taking before you even, yeah. You know, um, it's it's still an ongoing process. You don't peel through the layers. It's like an onion, right? It's constant. I always joke that I'm like a tin can with like multiple lids. An onion would be too easy. It's like metal on metal, like going through. Yeah. <laughs> Try and gnash it with your teeth. It's not happening. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's it's sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's hard. You lose things. You lose people. Mm -hmm. but I'd much rather lose all those things and find me and learn to love me and mm -hmm. I'm okay and there's nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I'm just learning what my self-worth is because I'd always put it into others. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a piece of shit. You're a this, you're a that. I believed it for a very long time. And it's like, no, I'm not. You're just afraid of who I am. Oof. Yes. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like you're mirroring a lot of what I have been going through, which is really, I mean, it's no surprise that we've connected at this point, like given what's coming up, you know, it just is what it is. But um, yeah. yeah, I was just talking about that last night uh, with a friend and that I'm kind of at that point of, of really stepping back into my self-worth and like figuring out how I do that and what that looks like for me. And with that also, um, especially with this, so I can talk about it more frankly. So like I got my tubes tied um, three weeks ago and it was, are you comfortable with this topic? Absolutely. Okay, first, Okay. So it was a bi laparoscopic bilateral tubal ligation, full removal. That's the technical stuff. Um, yeah. And I was journaling this week because when I, I talked to my therapist last weekend um, and I, and we were talking about like me getting sober being diagnosed diabetic, being diagnosed with MS and now having this surgery. And then he was like, it sounds like a lot to grieve. And I was like, that's the thing is I haven't, I haven't grieved it. And so no matter who commented that, you know, the bruises from my injections or whatever. And it wasn't like you're beautiful despite those. It's like, no, you just are beautiful. Like no matter who told me that I didn't believe it because I hadn't, fully process this shift in my life because I don't think I can yeah. find acceptance without grieving it. Right. Um, mm. but with the tubes getting tied, like I've wanted that a while. I have never wanted when I get to the truth of my desires, I've never wanted kids. That's never been a thing for my path. Um, and there's also the part where even if I did, I could adopt them, but like, it's just not me. It's just not me. So like I've known, um, it doesn't mean there's not something to be grieved. And what I realized why I felt there's a lot more to unpack still, but one of the reasons I felt I couldn't grieve that came up was um, there was guilt around the procedure, not having gotten it done, but of the disconnect between honoring the choice that I had and the part of my body that was taken out and how the like medical system disposes of that. Right. Which, 
and, and that's what was kind of coming up. And, um, and so now I'm at this point and what I'm kind of gradually diving into, and this has been like the last two days. So this is very fresh, um, is like, who am I as a woman? Like, what does that mean? Um, for me and where does that connection come into play? And with that, I think it does also connect to like self-empowerment, self-worth, um, Cause like, that's a big part of my energy. I just haven't, I don't think I could connect to it. Like everything about that region of my body grossed me out one. I think because I housed a lot of trauma there that I'm now working through and like, right. thank you. Like, thank you to that part of me for holding that when I wasn't ready to feel it. And then two, I think because that part of my body felt like it was betraying my desires because it wasn't set up in a way that led to the future I wanted. And like, now it is. So now I get to tap into that power. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's still, it's almost the way I'm taking it because you're going through the same motions as if a woman would have had a miscarriage. That's yeah. kind of. Except I guess the hard part is like, the thing that came up at first is like, how do you grieve something you never wanted? Cause in that case you would think the woman maybe wanted the child and couldn't. So, and I don't want to compare too much, but no. uh, it is still a grieving of possibilities. Right. 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 It's and still being grateful. I had agency. Right. Yeah. So yeah. No matter how you look at it, a loss is a loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you do what you got to do. You got to honor yourself and self-care is hugely important. I need to start doing a little bit more of that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm a busy mom and stuff and we're looking for a house and things. Oh, wow. And yeah. It's exciting times, exciting times, but I'm more excited for what's coming for my future because I know one day I will not have to leave my home. Mm -hmm. I will be... For lack of better wording, making money with my hobbies mm -hmm. because it's not what it's about. It's about to help and to teach and to learn and to heal and relay messages to those that, yeah, they say they're fine, but that little message from whomever's on the other side about that mm -hmm. special plate that you busted when you were five. Yeah. That really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of what the world and everything mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. That was just a thing. Even all your little tiffs you have here doesn't matter over there. It's mm -hmm. all about the love and the light and the healing vibes. Mm -hmm. Your soul families, the further on your path you get, the more and more people that are aligned are flowing to you. And I'm finding that more and more because it never is just a, yeah. we'll say going to university for five years. Mm. It's not that this journey is a lifelong journey mm -hmm. and it's one I'm willing to openly accept. And if my little ways of doing things help somebody else find their way along their path, mm -hmm. then I'm doing my job. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm not turning loose little assholes onto society. <laughs> Facts. My kids are good kids. Yeah. Um, no, I, it's interesting. Well, it's not interesting. There's a reason you're saying these things. Why should I even question it? Um, the <laughs> part about the, do. sorry? That's what we do. Right? The people that you mentioned, like the souls and the farther along you are and the more people coming in. And that's something that's happened like tenfold in the last, what, five, six months in my life too. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Like the first class that I took for Akashic Records, um, the first session, there were two people who messaged me during it being like, I think I've met you before. I was like, not this lifetime, <laughs> but like now right. we've, we've stayed connected and I've had a lot of people actually come in who I feel a deep connection to. And like, I am meant to know this person can't necessarily explain it um and that's just been it's been fascinating like my other friend and I who I'm gonna try to get on the show eventually <clears throat> she helped me with my initial like warding of my house and clearing when I had the spirits here because that was how this all started I'm gonna be talking about that on another one but um 
she helped me with that. We got connected through a friend who I wasn't even that good of friends with. And we've now realized we both have like past life connections to Egypt Mm -hmm. and we share a house spirit, which is not a common thing. Like normally you don't share spirits with friends is what I've come to understand. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, but we do. You don't either, but. Yeah, no. And we have, my guide has gone to both of us. So there's something more to like our connection that we just haven't quite put a finger on. You'll figure it out. My friend, Matt, that I added to this yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You'll figure out what your relationship is <laughs> way back. Him and I have centuries together. That's so and fascinating. Yeah. It was one of those, like you said, you look him in the face and it's like, hey. hmm I know you. I don't mm-hmm. know how I know you, but I know you. Yeah. It's your souls. It's your soul family finding each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what we, I think. No, I completely agree. And I think it's another thing too, is like, when I say you're not supposed to be able to do things like to an extent, I think that's BS because mm-hmm. none of this is that well articulated unless you're working within some sort of like a closed practice thing and you're respecting certain customs and traditions and blah, blah, blah. But like on the general day-to-day experiences, they're not that binary and like I don't want to discount my experience because someone says you can't both have the same spirit visit you that's not true yes you can exactly yes you can and we do and he's super cool uh he doesn't like my music taste that's fine (laughs) yeah don't have to but when I'm playing the music in the house you're free to leave no come back later (laughs) We just have words. It's all right. Uh, (laughs) But um, yeah, so that's been super interesting to realize. And um, it is happening more and more frequently. So I like that you kind of mentioned that. Um, When did you start tuning in to the fact that that was happening for you? Uh, Or like, what did that look like for you? Just I felt the need and more drawn to the metaphysical. I wanted to be in the shops. I wanted to be around like-minded people. Mm -hmm. It was almost like just a craving, Mm kind of like you want that bag of malt vinegar and salt chips, you know what I'm saying? And you ain't happy till you get it. Yeah. So I kind of went chasing after it. And thankfully I have a very supportive spouse. Yeah. And that's huge. Yeah. It's big time helps I mean every once in a while in the beginning he'd look at me like I'd lost my marbles and I looked at him because him and I knew each other when we were young kids Mm. like we went to school together and stuff and then we lost contact so he knows the core me yeah and he's like no I never knew you I didn't think you were crazy but I just kind of wondered what the hell different yeah (laughs) right I guess it runs in the family (laughs) yeah absolutely because uh I've asked my mom she had some stuff happen not too awful long ago Mm -hmm. there's something with her heart and her heart stopped and she basically saw herself laying on the floor and that's when she opened her mind her and I we didn't speak for well over 10 years Mm -hmm. too much that's like a whole other you know episode but (laughs) That's how you and I getting coffee, I think, and having the real family chat. Yeah. Right, exactly. In person. Yeah. Right. Um, I uh, recently reconnected with her and I went over to her house mm-hmm. and I had mentioned my other page and what have you. And uh, I was waiting for her to make fun because that's how my family deals with uncomfortable situations, sarcasm and humor. Oh, same. That's on both sides of my family. So, yeah. So uh, I was waiting for her to make fun. And then she had told me what had really happened. And hopefully Mm -hmm. none of my siblings watch this eventually. One for sure won't. The other one, maybe. There's six of them or five of them. So we'll see. I don't care if they do anyway. But um, she didn't really relay how serious the situation was to all of them. Okay. And then when she had told me she was staring down at the floor, then I felt a little bit safer Mm. to open up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I asked her finally, is there anybody else on our side of the family Mm -hmm. 
that is like me and my kids. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, as far as I know, you're it. And I'm like, okay, then I knew it for certain because there's a couple other cousins I don't know if you're aware of anyway. That's oh, for another coffee time family chat, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, they are kind of on this path too. Okay. So that's when I knew for certain it was this side. Interesting. Well, and and, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. Grandma Kelly, that's what I always called her, Great Grandma yep, Kelly. Me too. Yep. Um, at my grandmother Shirley's uh, funeral, I was very pregnant with my son. Mm. And she rolled up to me and she put her hands on my belly and she, big smile and that little mischievous twinkle in her eye. Yeah. She said, you're making me a great, great grandmother with that son of yours. And she looked at me and she smiled. She goes, but you already knew that, didn't you? Ooh. And I looked at her and I said, no. And then now that I think about that and that conversation we had, oh, she's kissing my forehead. Um, that conversation we had, I almost wish I would have had more time mm -hmm. to talk to her then. But I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you can always hook up a little later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. As you were saying that, I had like, chills is a big one for me, but they happen in different ways. Yeah. And as you were telling that, I felt like a full body shiver, but like move like through me. Like that was a lot um yeah. that's but this. I figure it stemmed from her and she I call it the shine right mm. for a lot because there's no real way to explain it because everything comes in on so many different levels and so many different ways mm -hmm. there's no way to explain it so I just call it the shine so I just wish I would have had maybe some time with her to talk about it but I'm very open with my daughter yeah Good. And uh, she suffers depression and stuff and anxiety, and she's a little bit bad right now, but she's also, she's yeah. put the walls back up on all that, and it's fighting back on her, so yeah. I just got to let her ride her journey, right? Can I ask how old your kids are? Because I guess I'm related to them. <laughs> 27 and 20. Oh, okay. I'm 29, so. Yeah, not much older than my older one. In the same, Yeah. So 91 was you then? Yep, that was me. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. And it makes sense too. Like now that I'm thinking about it, I was like, I was always like totally creeped out to go visit grandma, like in that home and couldn't quite explain why. And now it really makes sense. <laughs> it was very busy. Oh, it would have been. Um, I was actually really smart when I went to the hospital for my surgery. I forgot to put up any protection. <gasps> Yeah. Did you bring somebody home with you? Brought a couple somethings home. Um oh, shit. I was I was so pre also it was like six o'clock in the morning. I'd never had surgery. I was very overwhelmed going into it, right? And it's like, can I not just for one minute only think about my corporeal form? Like, do I have to always be thinking about all this other stuff? Like, seriously? Apparently I do. Um, and I got my spirit friend. I work with a local spirit to help me stay in my body and that was great um however I forgot to put up like my bubble um mm. and of course as a kid I wouldn't have known to do that in these other places that I was going and I would go to the graveyard all the time with my other nana like my mom's mom like yeah. probably not the best plan um and I have to wonder too this is a big all over the place conversation right now sorry there's so many thoughts coming in I think that's in the blood yeah <laughs> The drugs and the alcohol, I think one lowered my guard to these gifts, but it also took away any control that I had over them. And so I feel like I was just very vulnerable in so many ways for a very long time that Absolutely. entities attached to me. And we had a trickster in my house when my parents were divorcing and like all of these. And like, I had friends come over who weren't even into this stuff. And they were like, there's something in that room at the end of your hallway. Like it, they were adamant about this. Um, yeah. But I just, yeah, anyway, I'm just thinking about like going there and not having protection. Like no wonder I didn't like to go visit. It wasn't her. It was, I was very uncomfortable because I think part of me knew, but I wasn't fully aware. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so interesting. 
Oh, this is fascinating to me. Yeah, and now it's kind of cool to be able to talk about it and not be like totally terrified. I do that. And then I get to a point and I freak out and like backpedal, but uh, <laughs> yeah. That's all good. Right. But yeah. my, um, my guest, you and I talked about the one, the grumpy man, he, he left for now. Oh, good. Yeah. I wasn't talking to him. Cause I was like, dude, you can chill, but like, stop making my throat close up. And also like I need to heal. So like, you're going to have to wait until I have energy to properly communicate with you. And that night, as I was laying in bed, I like saw in my third eye, he like wheeled out into the hallway and just like left. Cause I think he was just bored of me. So he might come back, but for now he's left me alone. Maybe. Well, you set the boundary, right? You tell him, leave me alone for now. Exactly. I used to have, uh, it's a girl. I think she's about 13 ish, mm-hmm. uh, sandy blonde hair. Short sleeve, pink top, little skirt, Mary Jane's knee socks somehow attached to my husband. Oh. And she used to like to pop in when I'm in the shower. <laughs> okay, that's one of my worst fears is being stuck in the bath or the shower and somebody break into my home. You are at your most vulnerable. Oh, what are yeah. you going to do? Beat him to death with a fucking bar of soap? Like, come on. True. It's very so psycho-esque, right? Yeah. yeah, I said to my friends, this is happening, scaring the shit out of me. I'm going to wipe out. They're going to come home and there's their mom, you know, broken neck in the bathroom yep. or something. Shit. So they said to me, well, you realize you can set the boundaries and set the rules almost mm-hmm. like office hours. Just tell That's them. That's exactly what off. my friend calls it is office hours. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, piss off when I'm in the bathroom or I'm in bed, like, that's it. Get out of here. Yeah. I'll send you another episode if you feel like checking it out where I do the whole story, but the basis of it is I called my guide out on watching me masturbate and he did not deny it. (laughs) Oh, nice. Nice. I know sometimes I think. (laughs) (laughs) He was like, sorry, I didn't know it was inappropriate. I've never been human before. (laughs) Yeah. Piss off. (laughs) Yeah. It was kind of funny. It makes me laugh. I just think, you know, like, just some of the stuff they can see you do now and you don't even think because you're just having this human adventure yep I know you think you're alone and then you realize like oh shouldn't have done that no (laughs) yeah well I've got uh I lost a child when I was 19 and uh he comes back my son's name is Mikey and he comes around and he watches his mom and his sister and his brother well there was one morning like I hear them in my head with you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really hear him with the physical ears or see him with the physical eyes all the time. So I'm getting ready for work. It's like 20 to five, six in the morning. I'm putting on my jeans in the washroom. The door is open mm-hmm. and I hear, hi, mom. Whew. Well, it startled me. Yeah. I turn around fully expecting my daughter Cameron to be standing there and yeah. she's not there. So I kind of snickered and I laughed. I'm like, good morning, Mikey. You startled me. But that was the first time I actually heard him with my physical ears. Oh, wow. So that was a trip. Because like I said, I fully expected my daughter to be standing behind me. Yeah. And she was in bed sawing logs with the dog. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's so a... it. It changes all the time, right? It's yeah. almost like when they're, they feel you're ready for the next, they'll give you almost like a movie trailer. Mm-hmm so to speak, before you actually, they'll give you snippets of a new, a new way to see your do or be. Yeah. And then one day it just punches you in the face. It's like, how are you doing? And then <laughs> the thing is, for you to try and figure out what you were doing at the time said incident had happened. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that sounds about right from what I've kind of had so far. It's like you get launched and then you kind of find your footing again. And then they're like, oh, you got the hang of this? Okay, next level. And then like push you forward into whatever catastrophe is coming next. And at at least for me, and it's normally like there's a day of being super terrified of it. And then I step into the like, no, no, it's fine. I've done this before. It's not actually that scary. Like my friend pointed out, she's like, "Uh, oh, what was it? Because you know, that feeling of being watched is very unsettling, but she's like, well, of course it is. If you had a stalker, you'd be unsettled. It doesn't mean they're evil. Like these, these entities are evil. Like you're just uncomfortable because someone's watching you in your home. So once I could kind of separate, I feel uncomfortable and uneasy because of this from 
what that entity was actually bringing forward. Right. It, it's now started to feel a little more okay. Yeah. yeah. As somebody's tweaking my ear, I'm just like, not right now, I'm busy. Oh, now I'm curious though. <laughs> You're like, let's not do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's for another adventure. Maybe. Well, I have very much enjoyed our chat and getting to know you and hearing all the things. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm excited to do a real coffee and get get the dirt on the family if you're open to sharing when the time Ooh, comes. I know enough. Some yeah. people might be a little bit scared, some not so much. Yeah, we can keep that one offline, don't worry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. All well, right. Thank you. Have a great day. You're welcome. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of Coffee Time. Before you leave, don't forget to hit that subscribe button And if today's show resonated, I invite you to drop into the comment section and share whatever personal introspection came up for you today. Anything you can do to help make the show more accessible is super duper appreciated. Until next time, I am your host and coffee drinking companion, Natalie, wishing you a beautifully caffeinated day.